I am Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Guy Ziskin, CEO and founder of Secret Labs. Guy, welcome to the show and thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. Of course. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. There's a lot to dive into with Secret Labs and Secret Network, uh, special NFTs, Play to Mint. Um, let's just dive straight into it from you to kick us off with an overview of Secret Labs, your team's focus, and then we'll dive into all those details. Sure, sure. So Secret Labs is the company uh, behind Secret Network, um, you know, very much like Ethereum Foundation for Ethereum. We're the, we're the driving force behind Secret Network which is a blockchain with uh, smart contracts, but they have a twist. Essentially, all data on Secret Network is private by default. Mm -hmm. So you can do things in Secret Network that you can't do on other networks. For example, you can have um, voting um, on Secret Network, but where, you, but where the votes are confidential, so you don't know who's voting for what. Um, you know, you can have private transactions um, if that's what you want, and you can have something like uh, secret. You can have many other things, but one thing that we're seeing a lot is the use of secret NFTs. Mm -hmm. So, with uh, NFTs in general, you know, one of the most common jokes are that uh, it's true. Maybe you own an NFT, but I can right-click and save your NFT content, and it's mine as well. So, mm -hmm. with secret. With secret NFTs, the idea is that um, there could also be, alongside the public metadata, there could also be a private metadata component that only the owner uh, has access to. And for everyone else, it's encrypted and they can't see it. Wow, incredible. Yeah, I've been looking for more privacy-based alternative networks um, because there are a lot of, I don't know if you could call them flaws, but. Uh, there, there's vulnerabilities in a lot of the layer one protocols and as they're continuing to be built up. Um, so from what I understand, Secret Network has a lot of privacy functions, as you mentioned the NFTs there as well. Is it, so to say, comparable to layer one protocols like Ethereum where it has smart contracts, it has DAOs, it has uh, NFTs, as you mentioned, everything that a, a, a blockchain network would normally have as well? Yeah, it's very much similar. It's a, it's an L1 uh, blockchain with full smart contracts capabilities. Um, it has some benefits, so it's part of the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, which basically is very interoperable with other chains. So moving between Secret to any other Cosmos chain is uh, fairly trivial. Um, and also, you know, Cosmos chain and Secret included they are proof of stake, not proof of work. They generally have faster consensus and better performance. So they have some other benefits as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And I know that this, this is a big project. Um, I recently saw that uh, the network raised over $400 million uh, for the latest round of fundraising. So first of all, congratulations to Secret on that. That's incredible. Um, and I'd love to know if you have any more information surrounding the raise on that network in terms of the partners and the use of capital and what's that going to go towards? Sure. So um, all of it, um, all of that, we call it the ecosystem fund. All of that is collaboration with about 25 leading um, funds in the, in the crypto space. And the goal here is basically to give a lot of um, boost to the secret ecosystem. So it's basically a statement saying, hey, uh, if you're building on a secret network, there are some serious funding opportunities to help you both get started um, and also to you know, get to like later stages. The fund itself is split into two portions. About half is dedicated towards grants. And the idea is that grants are usually like first money in, it's like, you know, fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand uh, um, uh, dollars uh, checks. And the idea is, this is first money. Build your MVP, get some guidance, and then you can use that to release, get some user acquisition, and go for a full fundraising. And that's really the second part of the fund. The second part is really for like more mature projects, whether it's seed, Series A, token, equity, whatever, or beyond. 
uh, you can draw from the fund. So all of that $400 million, that's not meant to supply our, our operations. We did raise uh, a good amount otherwise, and we're not cash strapped, but it's really meant to focus on other people building on our network and give them the support. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And yeah, it's great to expand the ecosystem. And I'm curious on what kind of startups are building on Secret Network um, and with Secret Labs help. Is it mainly DeFi applications or like other decentralized applications? So there are, I'd say, three categories. One of them is DeFi. The other is NFTs, gaming, metaverse. Those two are like, you know, all, all of the rage in terms of like crypto right now. And then there's like more forward looking applications, many of them that are only um, available on secret network. Um, I think that's, 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 that's harder because the market isn't used to them, mm -hmm. but we're already seeing a lot of traction in them. So I'm going to start with the like, kind of like the, 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 the third category, because that's something that most people don't know. So we have applications like Alter. Alter is basically a decentralized, end-to-end um, -end encrypted messaging protocol. So it's kind of like a mix between Signal and ProtoMail, but it's completely decentralized, um, can be shut down. So that's, that's a really innovative product. And then there's Jackal. Jackal is an encrypted, um, decentralized file sharing system built on Secret and, and Filecoin together. And basically, the idea is that um, their first go-to-market, um, Engel, is essentially to allow um, um, journalists and sources, you know, let's say from like war zones, like let's say people, mm -hmm. people in, in, in Russia, maybe they want to share information securely with journalists outside of Russia. Mm -hmm. So they would be able to do that on that platform without like, you know, them, ideally with them reducing the risk that they would pose to themselves. So that's a really interesting use case. Another one is a computational um, medical, uh, medical data platform. So there's actually a couple of um, um, computational um, biology PhDs who are building a, a platform that allows people to share medical data together encrypted and then for researchers to use that data without actually seeing it um, in all kinds of research. So I'd say those are like, you know, end game kind of stuff. That's where like what blockchain really excites me about. Um, but other than that, you have the usual suspects. So you have a lot of games and NFT platforms um, that are building on secret. Most of them are using the privacy angle on some, on some form of another. Then you have DeFi applications like um, Secret Swap and, and Hydro and Sienna, which are building um, uh, let's say front running resistant um, lending protocols and AMMs and all kind of like DeFi projects. And um, that's, I think that that covers, there's like dozens of projects. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. And I'm glad that you first mentioned the messaging platform. I did see on the Twitter, uh, there's a link right at the top to the messenger and I feel like I'm speaking for many people in, in the blockchain industry where they're fed up of using a messaging platform owned by the technocracy or, you know, that has um, censorship and, and what you can and can't say. And there's no real good alternatives to messaging platforms and secret messaging platforms. Um, so that does look really promising. I will check that out. And um, and I think those are the, the cat that category that you mentioned first of the, the really forward-looking applications are the ones I'm most excited for because I feel like those are the applications that people that aren't in finance or every day are going to eventually start using and that will be when blockchain becomes mainstream. Those are the everyday applications. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, on the NFT side as well, uh, you mentioned about the secret NFTs and how they have specific competitive advantages. A lot of people are getting into NFTs um, and, and getting into crypto for the first time through NFTs, you know, artists and collectors. Um, and, and there's so many different access uh, functionality that you can put into NFTs. Maybe we can talk a little bit more about uh, the secret network NFTs and, and what your team has up uh, your sleeve in that regard. So secret network NFTs, I think we're just like starting to see the benefits. Um, secret NFTs are, are 
relatively new. They've been out for three months. We've already had dozens, if not hundreds, of NFT drops. Um, there's a platform called, there's a marketplace that's done millions in volume, in secondary volumes, like, like uh, uh, it's called Stash. And many of the successful meets have been completely sold out, like selling for six or seven figures. Mm -hmm. It's really, really vibrant. And many of them are using secret NFT capabilities in really interesting ways. I think one of the most interesting projects that we actually as Secret Labs worked on directly because it was interesting was the Quentin Tarantino collaboration. Mm -hmm. So Quentin basically, Quentin was really skeptical of NFTs. He, he actually said that he doesn't see the value of NFTs if everyone can right click, I mean, didn't say right click save, but he said, if everyone can see it and copy, it, what's the point? And we told him about our technology where he can basically release content from himself that only the owner would get to see. That's when it clicked and that's when we decided to work together. And what we did was cool. Like he took, he took um, the original Pulp Fiction screenplay which is handwritten. He's never shown it to anyone. It's in his private library. It has a lot of like markdowns and comments and all kinds of like goodies that hasn't been in the full movie. And he basically ta uh, took that, digitized it, recorded himself giving like unique, un unique content about the movie that people don't know. And we saw that um, and, and we made that into NFTs. And that to me was really like, you know, the, the power a showcase of the power of secret NFTs. Mm. And I think that's what made us realize that that and everything else happened in secret made us, Secret Labs, realize that, well, secret NFTs have a lot of value, a lot more value than what NFTs today provide. And we said, okay, let's build a new kind of NFT platform. Now, we didn't want to build a marketplace that exists. And we wanted to build something new that's much more interesting. So we build that NFT platform into something that is like own universe. Basically, it's kind of like a game, which is why we call it the play to mint NFT platform. And the idea essentially is that every user would start with a level one avatar. And they would, the way they would interact with mints is that they would buy random loot boxes. And those loot boxes, sometimes they would have, um, uh, you know, really interesting NFT drops like Tarantino, like um, PFP projects. Um, we're really focusing on the blue chip kind of like NFT uh, um, uh, drops, not like not like garbage and everything. Like we're really trying to get the best content to that platform. So you you mint the loot box, you might get something cool, or you actually might get equipment for your character, and that equipment helps you level up and gain experience and your character grows, A, it's gonna look cooler, but B, the, the stronger your character becomes, the more likely you are to get better and better means or access to means. So there's a stickiness component in that platform that really makes user kind of wanna stay and continue playing the game um, and earn better and better means. Hmm. Very cool. I like it, Guy. Thanks for explaining that. And that's super cool about the Quentin Tarantino secret NFTs with the original screenplay. Uh, I really want to learn more about that. And just about secret NFTs overall and, and how regular viewers and, and NFT holders from you know, Ethereum NFTs can start getting involved with secret NFTs. You know, is there uh, a, an easy minting platform for everyday people to start minting it, or how else can people get involved with the secret NFTs? So uh, th there, there's two ways. First of all, like if we take the Tarantino example, we've built it as an Ethereum NFT, and whoever, whomever bought it, um, they could like they, they there was like a whole UI, a whole web application, web free application that kind of walk you through how you move through the bridge get to Secret Network to actually see the exclusive content. Mm -hmm. So we've built a bridge and we're actually working with XP Network and others mm -hmm. to build more bridges. And the idea is that, you know, it's not going to matter where, where your NFT originate. Eventually, you're going to be able to buy on Ethereum, Solana, and or whatever. And then if there's exclusive, like, uh, if there's a secret private part for the NFT, then through some bridge, you would be able to port it to Secret and see the exclusive content. Also, 
um, vice versa, Legend DAO, the platform I just mentioned, mm -hmm. essentially it's going to be allow you to mint secret NFTs mm -hmm. with all their goodies. But then, if you want to then take them and sell them on secondary markets, those same bridges would allow you to move back to Ethereum or other platforms, or you can stay on secret and use Stash, which is secrets uh, marketplace. So it's up to the user. Um, and finally, Secret, Secret, and all of Cosmos use a uh, Kepler wallet or mm -hmm. some other wallets, but Kepler is the most well-known wallet. It's super easy. It's super simple. It's been built. It's been built very much like MetaMask. So if you use MetaMask, it's going to be very, very easy and intuitive for you. And I would even say that it's better and more streamlined because you know it's it's brand new and they had the ability to learn from past mistakes. Very cool. Thanks for explaining that. And yeah, I've heard from the Cosmos ecosystem and the influencers that Kepler Wallet works really well. And I'm seeing a trend through the Crypto Coin Show as well of Cosmos projects coming on and just having great fundamental value. And I can say the same for this as well. Um, so that's super cool. And now, Guy, we don't have a lot of time left, but for the viewers that want to learn more about all of the faucets of Secret Network that, that we've talked about and get involved with the NFTs and, and early dApps, what is the best way for people to learn more and to get involved? So, several ways. The, I'd say the, the, the best first place is go to SCRT, so it's secret, but without the ease, dot .network. That's the network's website. It has so much information for developers, for users. There's a secret agent program that you can join if you want to contribute more. There's the secret network Discord and Twitter and blog and all the channels where you get so much information. People are super friendly. You can come in and ask questions. Mm -hmm. That's on secret network. You can follow me. I try to provide good content about secret. So that's uh, guys is on Twitter. And finally, um, if you really want to get the secret NFT experience and kind of see things like Quentin Tarantino, then you should follow Legend DAO. So it's uh, Legend DAO with one D, Legend DAO NFT on Twitter, or Legend DAO again with one D.io uh, as a website. Those are the best places to, I think, get a, a, a good grasp of, of what's going on. Awesome, guy. Thank you so much. I will leave those links in the description box below as well for the viewers. All the best on everything Secret Network moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Sounds good. Thank you very much.